one. Hi, hello, my name is David Eggers and I am living in Northern New Jersey. I'm married, I've got two kids and I have had a successful career in theater and I've also been involved in multi-level marketing or network marketing since 2005. And um, you know, multi-level marketing or network marketing, you can call it either one, it's becoming so mainstream now that uh, in 2016, so this is just two years ago, these are the numbers for 2016, 20.5 million people were involved in the industry. Uh, 5.3 million of those people were actively building their own businesses, and the rest of them were consumers getting high quality products at a discount and also eligible to build their own businesses too. The industry altogether produced $35.5 billion in revenue that year. Uh, and every year these numbers are going up. Um, the multi-level marketing or network marketing industry, whatever, whichever one you want to call it, it's attracting more and more people, really good people, who are involved in the industry in order to improve their lives and also to have a positive effect on other people's lives. And yet there are still so many people out there right now who have false and negative ideas about the industry. And so I wanted to start this series to introduce some of the really good people that I have met in multi-level marketing who are doing good things with uh, the industry and building their own businesses and uh, they're working with excellent companies. And so in this episode, I'm interviewing my dear friend, Jen Morris. And Jen is a rising leader in Amare Global, the mental wellness company. And full, disclo full disclosure, we've known each other now for probably about eight or nine years, I think. And um, we are now teammates. So I want to be fully upfront and say that we are, bu we are building Amare together. I'm thrilled I get to work directly with her and be part of her team. Uh, she is my sponsor and she exemplifies the kind of person, the kind of really good person who's involved in this industry that I want people to know about. So hi, Jen. Hello. Thank you for the lovely introduction. Oh, well, my pleasure. Thank you for giving up part of your uh, valuable time today to do this quick little interview with me. Um, so if you would, would you just start by introducing yourself, like who you, know, who you are and where you live and if you have a family and uh, if your spouse is in the industry or doing something else, that kind of thing? Sure. Yeah. Well, first I want to say thanks for inviting me to chat a little bit today. Um, and I, I think what you're doing to create awareness around this amazing industry is fantastic. So bravo to you. Um, and it's, it's a pleasure to work with you too. You are someone that I've always admired. And, and I guess I have a little envy around the amazing um, performing career you've had. And <laughs> that, is, that is no easy feat either. So, um, so the, the admiration is, is uh, is uh, likewise, I guess. Oh, you're making think. me blush. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So I um, I spent about 15 years on the East Coast between undergrad and then lived in New York uh, in DC and then lived in New York for about nine years and then almost three years ago my uh, husband and I moved to Denver where we reside now. Um, and uh, we are fairly new homeowners um, in the North Denver area, outside downtown, um, undergoing some house renovations, as you can sort of see behind me, <laughs> this door frame is <laughs> removed. <laughs> this nice. is crazy, so I'm just going <laughs> to bring some attention to it and move on. Um, and so that's been really a whole other challenge and, and a, a, wonderful, a wonderful gift to be able to do. Um, and then uh, 14 months ago, we became parents. So we do have a little girl named Neve. And um, she's adorable. Amazing. Thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm quite fond of her. Uh, and so obviously things shifted quite a bit with that. Um, mm -hmm. My husband is very supportive. He um, uh, does is not the primary on on our business definitely that is me but he's he's a very supportive spouse which is um, a huge gift and uh, he um, by day is a computer engineer software engineer web developer you know uh, literally writes and speaks another language <laughs> when it comes to to creating all sorts of amazing technology so that's what he right. does Right. All right. Well, thank you for that. That's great to know a little bit about, you know, where you are, who you are, the kind of family that you have and that kind of thing. But tell me about what was your life like when you were first introduced to um, the industry of, of multi-level marketing? And, yeah. and if, you, if you can talk a little bit about, you know, where you were in life and uh, maybe a little bit about um, 
how you learned of it and, and uh, how you got started. Sure. So it was uh, over 10 years ago, actually, and it'll be, I think, 11 years in, well, it's probably about 11 years now that I was kind of first exposed to it. I didn't end up doing anything until it'll be about 11 years this fall, which okay. is, just blows my mind. Yeah. Uh, time goes fast, right? Um, and uh, my life was crazy. Um, I had moved to New York uh, not too long before, the summer before, um, and I had just finished a national tour of a musical. So I have a performing background too. And, you know, it was a gift to be able to perform and live on the road, you know, for nine months and get paid to, to act. And it was a union show. So I was well taken care of and all of those things, um, which was great. And then, um, decided I was ready to move to New York. So I moved to New York and promptly pretty much spent everything I had saved, um, on the road trying to, you know, put a deposit down in an apartment and move and all the moving expenses and then mm -hmm. headshots and acting classes and all the expenses that come along with, um, trying to have an acting career. So that meant that I had to start picking up multiple survival jobs. So um, at any given point or week, I was doing anything from babysitting to administrative assistant work to um, cocktail waitressing to, uh, you know, on also auditioning, getting up at the crack of dawn to go stand in line and hope to get an audition. I was taking acting classes um, and I had a couple other part-time jobs sprinkled here and there as well. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. And on the tour, I had um, suffered an injury and so my body was still recovering from that. And I wasn't really making very good decisions about my um, health either. And it kind of dawned on me that as an actor, um, you're judged instantly on how you look, unfortunately. Um, but also it just wasn't serving me in other ways. Uh, it's really hard to get up really early in the morning if you feel like poo. <laughs> so <laughs> you go and then have to like be your best and look amazing and do all these mm -hmm. performing things. So mm -hmm. a lot of that was kind of percolating back my mind. And right around that time, I actually um, took another part-time job. Um, I answered a Craigslist list ad looking for event coordinators and uh it turned out it was for a corporate healthcare company and that is where i was really introduced to kind of this holistic um you know nutrition wellness kind of world and also um to the network marketing industry because i started to meet a lot of people who had nutrition-based network marketing companies right so life okay. was crazy <laughs> uh -huh. i had no time at all um but despite working you know 60 70 hours a week sometimes it felt i still like could barely pay my bills. So mm -hmm. there was definitely mm -hmm. um, a need there in a lot of ways. I see. Um, and what did, you, what did you know about network marketing, if anything, before you were introduced to the, yeah. the whole concept at that time? I did you know anything about it? Was, I mean, I did and I don't know how I did. Like that's okay. the thing. I guess at some point I had heard something that was like, oh, you know, pyramid schemes. And I even remember the, the first company <laughs> I worked with, um, you know, when I first looked at it, I, I said, you know, I asked the person, I said, is this like one of those pyramid things? And I didn't right. even know what the hell I was talking about. You know, right, that's right. funny. And, I, and now I've come to see that that's very common. A lot of people say, it and, I, and I say, well, what do you mean by that? And they really don't know. And that was totally my um, reality too. And um, I'm, I feel really um, uh, lucky that despite my skepticism and despite having these, you know, ideas where I don't even know where they came from in my head mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that um, I was an open-minded person enough of an open-minded person to lean into the little voice of me that kind of said like, well, this could be kind of cool. Like what's the harm, you know? Right. right. Um, so what did you see then, if I can ask you, what did yeah. you, what did you see that made you realize that it wasn't, a pyramid sure. scheme, which we yeah. know as smart people are illegal, right? We know right. those things are illegal. <laughs> yeah. So what did you see that helped you realize that, oh, the, wait, this is, there's a legitimate thing here? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think it was just this idea that all the other jobs I was doing at the time were about making somebody else's life a lot easier while in turn burning myself out. Mm. And what I saw in network marketing was this idea that I could help somebody and help myself at the same time. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that's, that's smart business, really. Um, mm -hmm. You know, any good business idea, successful business idea, um, I wouldn't say any, because there are some people who make money by, you know, maybe not, not thinking about the customer first. But I think good business models that have succeeded, if you look at like, you know, Airbnb, for example, um, it, it's an idea of, of giving people an opportunity to open their home and maybe make a new connection or friend and help somebody out, you know, help somebody be able to stay 
um, in a place that might be, you know, comfortable and less expensive than a hotel. Um, and also you can then pay your bills. <laughs> so right. it's kind of like, and it's, it's, you know, who would have thought that, that would end up being this like, you know, hugely successful um, idea. And so I kind of saw that from a young age. And I think I also just sort of thought like, what, you know, right now it's like, what do I have to lose? It was a really low point of entry. Um, if anything, I thought, well, maybe the products will be good, you know, and I'll, and I'll notice some improvement for myself. And if I can help a few people along the way, like I would recommend, you know, I've had this funny, I, I didn't think about this when I put the, chose the shirt today, but I like this shirt and I bought it a couple weeks ago. And I've had quite a few people who saw me in a photo on Facebook say, oh my God, where'd you get that shirt? Uh -huh. And I told them TJ Maxx, <laughs> which is where I got the shirt. And it's like, we do it all the time. We recommend people, you know, things that we like and people ask us, what do you use? Where do you get your haircut? You know, that kind right. of thing. What's a good show playing on Broadway, you know? And we do it all the time. Um, and so I think I just was kind of like, what, what's wrong with recommending something? If someone doesn't want it, that's okay, you know? But yeah. like, hey, w what if it could do something awesome for, for, you know, for me and for them? Like, that's a win-win. That's awesome. Um, so w at what point did you... Because that sounds really sort of like, okay, I've got nothing to lose. I might as well try it. But then at what point did you start getting excited about what was, you know, what this industry could be or, or, you know, yeah. how did things start? How, you know what I mean by that? Like, yeah, like definitely. how did it go from, I've got nothing to lose to, oh, wow, this is really, this could, this industry could be really something. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think it was, you know, it's, it's building belief, right. In an industry and, and what you're doing and that's anything. I mean, you know, from an acting perspective, every time I would be about to be like, Oh, screw this, I'm done. Then you'd get a call from, you know, somebody, or you'd see an audition that was exciting to you, or, or you'd have a really good audition or you'd get booked in something and then your mm -hmm. belief builds. And so it was kind of the same thing. It, it wasn't like overnight, but I think it was this idea that as I started to, you know, read more, um, and meet other people in the industry, you know, with the company I was with and also out, you know, other places and, and just started to like, you know, kind of look around more. All of a sudden I was like, my eyes were open to this. Um, again, it was this idea that like, I could have freedom um, in my life, you know, not immediately, but that I could build something for myself and for my future that, you know, hopefully nobody could take away. Um, and I like that I had some control over it because mm -hmm. I think coming from an acting background, um, those of you who might be actors watching this can relate to this. I think you, you don't feel like you have a lot of control over it at all. And so you can do all the prep in the world and you can go through 18 callbacks and you can still not get the part because they wanted a blonde and they didn't think they could put a wig on you and make you look blonde, you know, or because they mm -hmm. wanted someone two inches shorter. And it's, it's a lot of... Um, of, you know, some of it's who you know and luck and everything, but I often felt it didn't really necessarily come down to the, who the best person was, you know, um, for the role. And we've all seen that, you know, we've watched right. movies and we're like, really? Right. Okay. Um, and so I felt a little helpless and I felt like I was investing so much time and money and energy into my acting career and doing all the right things, you know, taking the class you're supposed to take and going and meeting the agents and getting the headshots and showing up. And I was part of the union, like doing all these things. And yet I still just couldn't really gain traction. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, if I was able to put the same amount of energy and, um, and work and, and, you know, that kind of thing, but less money really, mm -hmm. um, you know, at the end of the day, it was really so much less, you know, like so much less uh, in something that I could get so much more leverage and traction from. Leverage. Than, That's something we should talk about. We're yeah. going to come back to that. Keep going and though. Then why, then why not? You know, why mm -hmm. wouldn't I, why wouldn't I do that? And it's something that, you know, it didn't require me showing up somewhere at any time and place. It was something I could do portably. So I could be sitting in an audition, have a conversation with somebody and it could lead to something. I could, um, you know, be sitting next to someone on the subway. I could, you know, it, it also wasn't like New York based. So I had people all of a sudden all over the country that I could, you know, help or I could talk to and who could work with me. And, um, and so that was really cool. And that's what I mean by leverage. It, it mm -hmm. wasn't location dependent. It wasn't about, you know, um, some of these, sometimes you'd see an audition and it was like a day and you were going to be out of town for a wedding and you're like, great. That's, that's a show I'd actually be great for. <laughs> and, and yet I can't do it, you know, because I already have these travel arrangements and I was tired of kind of living my life that way. Um, I wanted something that I could have control over that I could decide when I wanted to show up and if I, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And, and, but yet, 
um, I got a much better batting average, you know, with my network marketing business than I did with my acting career. And so that was motivating and awesome. Um, yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, so, uh, let's talk, let's jump ahead a little bit and go to, let's talk a little bit about how, like, what are some of the benefits that you've personally experienced from making that leap, getting involved in network marketing in this industry, being your own boss, creating that leverage, you know, what are some of the benefits? And I don't mean like necessarily talking about, you know, money figures and stuff like that, because that's personal, that's private. I don't really want to go down that road. I just mean like, what are some of the benefits, you know, yeah. in addition to what you've already mentioned? If, yeah, you know. it's, it's given me a lot of flexibility in my life um, because of the money. So, I mean, that they, they, they do go hand in hand, right? It's not, it's not about like how much you make or what kind of car you drive or your house or anything to me at least. And, and for other people that is, and that's okay. But for me, it was about having um, the, the value of time. So what mm. I mean by that is that um, when I've wanted to be able to go home for, you know, the holidays and not just have to fly in and out in like three days, I've been able to do that. Um, I feel like I've been able to really show up for my family in a way that if, you know, um, somebody was sick or a grandmother, you know, was, was ill, I could, I could go and I could, you know, drop everything and, and go. Um, when I did have my daughter, I had, a, had built a really nice business at that point. And so I had, you know, people are like, oh, are you taking maternity leave? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, because I, because I can, like, I don't have to ask anybody. I just, I was able to, and yet, um, the same money would come in and that was really very cool. Um, and when we wanted to leave New York and, and look to move, we, we could do that because I had income that would follow me and it didn't involve me having to go and interview and talk to recruiters and that kind of thing. So it's given me a lot of options and I'm big on options. And I, I like to say that I, um, it's not up to me to decide what people's choices are, or options are. I just want to give them vehicles to, to have choice and options in their life. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people feel like they have to do things a certain way because, because of money, you know, or because of health insurance or because of, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, and I like to say, Hey, this, this could be something that could give you, could be a vehicle to give you some options. Um, whatever that is for you, whatever life you want to live is not for me to dictate. Um, I, you know, feel very fortunate that I've been able to be home with my daughter um, and work from home and run a business from home and, and mm -hmm. have childcare when I need it because I do need it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's also not wrong to want to go back to work, you know, <laughs> when you have kids or whatever. So, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that salary is going to give you the flexibility that you want as your kids get older or allow you to put them in private school if you want right. or, you know, whatever it is you need. So I'm, I'm just about giving people whatever decisions you want to, you know, choose to make in your life. That's great. But network marketing can be a vehicle to have you give you other, you know, um, routes you can take as well, well uh, that, or support the choice you've already made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Um, and that kind of leads into my next question, which is how has your um, work in this industry been a positive um, effect for other people? How's it impacted other people? I don't know, maybe that will bring up like a, a teammate or somebody else's life that you've helped improve or, or uh, some, and maybe some way you've empowered somebody else. I mean, how is your involvement in this industry had a positive impact elsewhere? Yeah. Um, gosh, I hope people would say that there's been a positive impact. Well, I know it has. So it's sort of, a leap, <laughs> but I, I know that you've, you've had a positive right? impact on people. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely have a lot of people who have been product users of, of you know, of companies I've worked with um, who, who have, you know, who I know have had, you know, who've told me like, this has really helped with X, Y, Z. And, you know, um, and that's been amazing, of course. Um, I think the business, it's been awesome to see people um, break down their fear barriers. And I'd say that's another benefit for me. I'm a totally different person in many, many positive ways than I was, you know, 10, 11 years ago. Um, I have much more confidence. I have a lot more grit. I don't really care about what people think about me and my choices. Um, and I spent so much time and energy worrying about that stuff when I was an, when I was an actor and right. every once in a while I'll go to an audition and I'll feel that creeping in again. And I'm like, Whoa, that feels weird now because what was so normal for me in my past chapter now is like, wait, why, why am I so in my head about this? You know? Um, 
because I, I definitely am, am much more confident and I've seen that happen with other people. Um, and that's what I really love about this industry is for those who are willing and not everybody is, but for those who are willing, it can be a transformative personal journey. Um, that's just amazing. And, mm -hmm. and I think the best thing is when someone on my team will call and say, Hey, well, so this happened today and this happened today and this happened today. I'll be like, great. And so like, what, you know, like what's next? And they're like, Oh, well, I already did this, this and this. And like, they knew what to do. They weren't call They were calling just to like share their news. They weren't calling to get coaching. And that's when I know like it's working because they're, you know, they're, um, immersed in the process and they are they are sponges and they're absorbing it and i that's that's really what i love about it um mm -hmm. but of course there have been other people who who have you know there's been a lot of people who have the extra income has changed their life or given them options um has allowed them to you know do whatever they need to do for their family or quit a job that wasn't serving them or um or or find their next path in life you know i've had people who have come in and worked with me and they've realized this wasn't for them and i've said that's okay like i bless you on your way and and please go and now i, I keep in touch with them and i see that they're doing something else that's like really their passion and their mission in life and i'm like you know i think that being a part of what I, you know, of, of the company and everything that what we worked with was a, was a stepping stone. And mm. even if they realized it wasn't the right thing for them, it, it got them to the next place in their journey. And I love that. And I never feel like, Hey, if someone decides this isn't for them, I'm like, that's okay. As long as there's integrity around it and honesty around it, then I am the first to admit this is not for everybody. I think it can be for everybody, but that doesn't mean it's going to be for everybody. Right. Um, and so that's what's, you know, really cool. Um, you know, the company I'm working with now, Amari, as you mentioned, that we're both working with, um, it's kind of taking everything like to the next level because they're all about mental wellness. And I think um, that is something that I had a lot of kind of uh, shame around for a long time. Some of that anxiety I felt and that like negative self-talk and everything, it was something that I was, you know, I was like coaching people and empowering them to like, you know, be their best self. And yet I was dealing with some demons still um, for, you know, for a while because we're all work in progress is right. It's not like now I leap out of bed every day and I think I'm like the best version of myself, right? We're all work in progress, uh, uh, works in progress. But I think now doing the work that we're doing with Amari, it's really kind of like bringing everything full circle because it's allowing me to really like share in a much more authentic way about what's really going on with me. And and I think me being honest about where I'm at and my journey and everything um, is really giving permission to people to, to open up. And even if they never do anything with Amari, if, if that can be the first step again in, in a healing process, then that's awesome. You know, that's, that's the, that, that's, that's a huge win. Yeah. Um, it's not just about putting dollars in my bank account. It's about, you know, being a piece of a puzzle for somebody. That's awesome. Uh, you you took me right into the next question, which is fantastic. But I want to jump back to something you said before about the personal development side mm -hmm. of what it is we do. I think I once heard somebody say that this industry, if you allow it to be, is like a personal development um, uh, course, if you will, <laughs> that's tied to uh, uh, a business or an income, mm -hmm. you know structure um, because I feel like that that is such a big piece of it or it can be and yeah. I know for me personally that's been a really big piece of it too it's just you can grow so much yeah um, not just by the people that you interact with but also you know you learn about specific books or specific trainings or or in this case with Amare you know it can be you know learning about the value of meditation or you know other sort of mental wellness and mental development pieces um, so, uh, that's one of the things that I love too. And I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that up. So now going back sort of where you were taking us, um, I was, my next question was, what are you excited about now? You know, what are you excited about with this business and this company? And you've already, you've already touched on that a little bit, but I would love to invite you to, um, uh, expand on that. If there's anything more that you yeah. feel you're excited about now with, not just with, um, I guess two, two parts, the industry itself, if you will, but then specifically the company that you're with, Amare. Sure. Well, the industry itself, I'm excited about because you know, when I started uh, 11 years ago, almost, my friends were like, what are you doing? Like, what? <laughs> you know, there wasn't this awareness. And 
I'm kind of, I fall between this Gen X and I don't know what Gen, I guess I'm considered Gen Y, but then millennials, I'm kind of in this like weird, like we didn't really have, we weren't Gen Xers, we're not millennials. Um, and so that, that age range, it was sort of like, you know, we either knew about network marketing because our parents or grandparents did it and maybe had a bad experience or we grew up in a household that did it and we were like, oh, we don't want to do what our parents do, right? Right, right. Um, it's been around a long time. That's another thing. Yeah, 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 it has been. I mean, it. yeah, it has been. And um and, or it was like, you know, we, you know, I graduated before 2008, you know, and, um, and also being an actor, I was kind of used to like not having like, you know, a real job, quote unquote, you know, um, kind of hustling and, and always figuring it out. Um, but I think that, you know, 2008 was kind of a wake up call for a lot of people that like, whoa, okay, like we can't depend on, you know, what our parents had and yet technology is shifting everything. And so people got a little more open to the idea of having other businesses, whether it was dog walking or then Uber came along and Airbnb came along and all of a sudden it was like this idea that like, Hey, it's kind of cool to like have a side hustle. That doesn't mean you have to develop it from the beginning. Um, because I think a lot of people think oh, I have a side business, but it involves like, you know, making something right. Like Etsy, which is, which is great too. Right. right. Um, but you know, labor is involved or, you know, opening like a, a storefront um, or building an app or something that, you know, you have to do from scratch. Um, right. And so I think the appeal of not having to do it all from scratch is really, is really cool. So, so to take that back to what I'm excited about, I'm excited because I think that technology um, and this shift in our economy and, you know, kind of global thinking has made network marketing all the more relevant again. And now I like to say, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when I think you're going to try something, you know, and again, you might try one and it might not be for you. And if you, if you are listening to this and you're like, oh yeah, I've been there, done that. I, you know, tried it. It wasn't for me. You could just been with the wrong company and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. I was with the company for a long time. Um, and I recently, you know, somewhat recently made a change and it was, it was hard and I've had a lot of like guilt and weird feelings around it. And now I've come to realize that like, you know, if you could be, you know, if really get to acting again, you could be a company member of Lion King for, you know, eight years and you might decide one day, you know what, I think it's time for me to try something else. I think it's time right. for me to move on. Right. Um, and that doesn't make you wrong or bad. It means you're giving someone else an opportunity yeah. <laughs> by you deciding yeah. to move on. Right. And, um, and you know, your life changes and things become, other things become more important. And so for me, it was this mental wellness piece became really, um, you know, important to me. I think becoming a mother brought that really clear, made that really clear to me. Um, but, you know, it, it can be a great industry if you're with the right people and the right company in the right time and, and a company with integrity and that you believe in, you know, you have to believe mm -hmm. in that. But right now there's so many out there doing it and having tremendous success, really mainstream. And that's what I'm excited about. When I see companies having a lot of success doing it ethically, Mm -hmm. um, then I'm, I'm excited. And I am like, that, that's great. I'm, I'm excited because that means that it, it's good for all of us, you know, in the industry. And we shouldn't view it as competition. We should view it as it's what's good for one company is good for the whole industry. That's right. Um, what I'm excited about as far as what I'm doing now is um, it's really been a lot of fun being with, um, you know, a, a new company um, and kind of helping to create it. And, you know, startups can be interesting right <laughs> and so you know you want to make sure it's like a well-funded and it's well-backed and there's the right leadership and everything and you know um in place and uh you know do your homework but it also can be super exciting um and mm -hmm. i just i to be a part of something that is growing kind of without you know um with or without me i is really is really exciting so i and i think five years ago i wouldn't have been ready for that you know right. i think um i you know i'm really glad that my beginnings of this was with a company that had been around a long time and, you know, had a lot of that backing and everything. But now um, kind of 2.0 version of me is, is like really excited about being part of, of a company that's new and fresh, um, but super mm -hmm. relevant, relevant and doing, yeah. doing something really meaningful and really different. And that's, that's what's really exciting. What do you wish that people would know about, multi-level marketing or network marketing? What would you want them to know? Um, that it is, it can be whatever you want it to be. And I Tell think more. that a lot of people think, uh, fall in, in maybe two categories of like, well, I can only make a little bit of money in this, you know? And so sure, I can, you know, make a little bit of extra money and it could be for a vacation fund or something like that. Um, and 
really, you know, I think the sky can be the limit if you're with the right company, you know, and, and that kind of thing, of course. Um, and so, or people kind of come into it thinking, I'm going to make a million dollars in my first six months. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure there are people who are, you know, and someday uh, that could happen for yeah, someone. Who sure, knows? Sure. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? You know, um, <laughs> but, um, but get really disappointed when the first three people they talk to who it's like their aunt, their uncle and their brother are like kind of shoot them down, you know? Mm. And so I think it's, it's the idea that you have to be open and everything, but you have to also be able to like put in the time. And, and that is something I see a lot where people sign up and then they're like, why am I not making money? And it's like, they're not, they're not, in, they're not committed to the process. And like anything, you know, you, you hear these stories of overnight success in any industry, right? You hear about the person who went in, who moved to New York, went to their first audition and booked, you know, a Broadway show that wanted, right. you know, that, yes, of course, like those are the outliers, right? And in network marketing, there's also the people who join, they don't have any experience and within a year, they're at the top rank in their company. Awesome. Great. But what we don't see is what happened behind the scenes. You know, the person who moved mm -hmm. to New York and auditioned, they probably have been taking dance and music and, and, you know, classes for their entire, you know, life, right? They um, made the decision to take the risk to move to New York and to show up to that audition. They showed up, right? So they trained and then they showed up and they did what they could do. The person who has that sort of success in network marketing, that doesn't, it didn't just happen. They talked to hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people. They, you know, they, they did the, the process. They committed. They learned. They failed probably mm -hmm. more than they succeeded. And I think that that's what people need to know, too, is that, you know, you can't look at somebody's, you know, you cannot judge somebody's potential in this business by their first month or two or even year right, in right. it. And so, yeah, I think it's the difference between um, playing a scratch-off lottery card. Right. And learning some skills. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good analogy. That's a good right, analogy. right. Because you're talking about skills, like, mm -hmm. you know, learning how to talk to people, talking to enough people, you know, learning the process, putting the process to work, you know, that kind of thing. All yeah. the, not yeah. being afraid of somebody saying no. And, you know, these are all things I think some people think like, oh, well, you're good at this because you were an actor. And it's like, well, I wasn't a super successful actor. If I, if I was as gritty as I was now, as I then, you know, as I was now and, and as consistent about everything that I'm consistent about now, I would have been much more successful in my acting hmm. career. I have no doubt. I've learned that through building a network marketing business. Oh, interesting. Um, and I think the other thing that came to mind right there that you said is, um, which is escaping me now, um, Skill. Oh, and that, you know, I don't have any sort of business training. Um, I mean, okay. I've done a lot of ongoing education since starting, but I didn't have, I didn't study it in school. I was a musical theater major. I mean, right, on. right. you know, I had, I have, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've made some bad financial decisions in all areas of my life, not, you know, network marketing, but um, I don't have any sort of finance background. I don't, you know, I don't have um, any kind of crazy, like, you know, social media training or anything like that. I, I don't have any shortcuts. There aren't any shortcuts, you know, mm -hmm. so you don't have to have an MBA to do this. You don't have to have a musical theater degree to do this. You don't have to have a college degree to do this. You know, you don't have to have a high school diploma to do this. Um, you have to be willing to, you have to be coachable. You have to be willing to get out of your comfort zone. Um, and, and it's okay if you're not. And that's, that's right. where I say, it's okay if this is not for you right away, because there are some things you do have to be willing to do. And I think, I think and not enough people, the thing I'd like to see change in the industry is for people to be a little more real about that. Because I okay. think it's often just, you know, oh yeah, anybody can do this. Well, yes, anybody can, but the people who can, I really do believe have to be willing to, you know, again, get uncomfortable, be brave, be bold, be willing to fail, be willing to train mm -hmm. differently. Um, people who are not willing to do those things probably most likely won't have the success that they want. Um, and I think that's, that's the piece that, you know, um, you know, oh, just go talk to more people. You're not talking to enough people. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking to a lot of people and you're not having any kind of res positive result, then there is something that needs to be tweaked. So, you know, right, there's right. Like that piece too. Now for the, for the people who are, don't know anything about the, uh, an ethical company in this industry, um, talk about, uh, you know, is the training there? Where do you get the training? Yeah, I think you want to look for a company that that has it available um, and that has, you know, leadership with a good track record, you know, in business and also in network marketing, um, ideally. Mm -hmm. I think um, you want to look for a company now in the digital age that has um, everything available digitally. Um, that's, that's, you know, 
that's there for you because that's just at the end of the day, that's just how we're growing now. That is the future of it. Um, you know, and that doesn't take apart the one-on-one conversations, of course, I love to do it that way, but there's a huge digital component as well. Um, and also, you know, who are the people you're going to be working with? Are they, um, positive people? Are they, um, do they treat you like an employee? Cause that shouldn't be happening. Or do they, you know, treat you like, um, you know, they're, you're part of a community um, mm-hmm. and a team. Um, and Sorry uh, for the noise in the background. That's I, okay. Um, there's a truck going by. I, yeah, no worries. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, I think, I think you want to look at that too. And are people, mm-hmm. you know, um, I've had some people say to me like, yeah, you know, I kind of dabbled in a company, but it just seemed like it was all just about like money and big, you know, fancy cars and houses. And again, there's something wrong with that. You might be listening and be like, well, that's exactly what I want. So there's companies out there and there are teams out there where that is exactly like, that's where you want to be. Right. Um, and then there are people who are like, yeah, I mean, I want to make money, but I want to do something good with it. And then there are teams and companies more focused on that. So you can tell a lot by a company based on like what you see on the landing page of their website. Um, Mm, or when, when mm. it looks at the opportunity, what do you see? And so it's just about what resonates with you and trust your gut. And if you're looking at a company and you're like, there's a voice in your head saying, this is not the one for me. Don't judge a book by its cover, you know, and don't judge an industry by one company you right, know, might be a right. better match for you. And it's okay to make a change or it's okay to tell the person, you know what, this just is really not the right company for me. And I applaud what you're doing. And I think this is great, but like, I think that another one might be a better bet. And if that person is really nasty to you, then you probably make the right decision. <laughs> um, you know, and it's okay to kind of, you know, like to just, yeah, trust your gut and trust your intuition yeah. and, and don't let somebody kind of push you into doing something because that's about their agenda. That's not really about you. The right, the right mentor, the right teammate is going to want you to do what's best for you. Um, that doesn't mean they're not going to like, once you sign up, say, okay, now we have to put a plan together and you have to actually go talk to people. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but it's, um, at the end of the day, if you ever feel like it's really all about them, then that's, that can be a sign that it's maybe not the right fit. Yeah. Great stuff. Great information. So another, and pr- probably our last question, cause we're, yeah. we're running a little long is, um, for somebody who doesn't know, uh, much about the the business of multi level marketing or network marketing. How do you like just speak for a moment about how how you do it? How do you do it? Like, <laughs> are you a salesperson? You go knock on doors. You know, I know, I know, I know the answers to these questions. But somebody watching sure. this may not know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, every company and every team is going to have a different kind of way of doing this, right? Um, no, I don't. I, I that's I'll tell you what I don't do. I don't knock on doors. I don't really cold call. Um, I don't push people into doing something I want. I don't, um, uh, are there sales involved? Yes. And again, what some, some companies will say, and I was told this a lot too, like, we're not selling, we're not selling. And I think what people mean is like, we're not, yeah, we're not like walking blindly into companies unless you want to, and people do, and that's great, you know? Um, but you don't have to do that. Um, we're not calling our neighbor, our friends and saying, Oh my God, you got to buy this from me. I'm in business now. So you have to support me. You know, that that's, you know, I don't do that. Um, it's again, not about me. Um, but at the end of the day, like, yeah, we're, we're, that's what makes us not a pyramid scheme because we are actually selling a product, right? A product, right. Um, mm-hmm. And so you know, <clears throat> there is a sales component, but it's, you know, there's sales looks different in many ways. I've worked in sales in other ways too, that are very, very, very different. So again, don't judge sales, you know, by its cover either, because there's lots of, we're all selling something really at the end of the day. Um, not all, but most of us are mm-hmm. in what we do. And so, um, I think what I do is I really try to listen more than I talk. This is an exception today. Um, I look <laughs> for, I have, I have a lot of conversations with people. I get to make a lot of new relationships. Um, I get to share, um, passionately about what I'm about and who I am and, and what I want to do and help. And, um, and I do reach out to people, but I don't reach out to people and, you know, just vomit information on them or that kind of thing. I, I reach out to people and I say, Hey, I, I've, you know, saw you posted this, or I've heard you talk about this in the past. And I have something that could be something you'd want to check out. Let me know if you want to. Um, and mm-hmm. they get to make the choice if they want to or not. Um, and then I share information. Um, right, so. One of the mentors in our company says, our job is to bring people to the middle. And I feel like that's what I spend my day doing. And then people get to choose and um, it's not that's a great. side for them. And so that, that's a lot of what I do. And I know that's kind of like, you know, not giving like details, but again, I think every company is a little different. So I don't. Yeah, think sure. Sure. Like but that. no, but you're hitting, you're hitting on the, the nail on the head. I, I think with one of the best practices in the industry, which is permission marketing. Mm-hmm. 
you sort of said that where you said, you know, you'll reach out to somebody and say, Hey, I've got something, you might be interested in it. Can I share some information with you? Yep. So you're asking for permission to really, you know, Definitely. and there are companies some- that have more party, party models, you know, ours doesn't now, but, um, but you know, or workshops or classes. And so like, you know, if, if you love doing that kind of stuff, if you love having parties and that might, you know, a company that has more of a party structure may be a good fit. Um, if you don't, then you probably shouldn't join a company that's all about parties. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that's probably not going to be, you know, something you want to do. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Well, great stuff. Um, and, and that just reminds me that, you know, there are so many companies out there, yeah. you know, it's just, the industry is huge. I think that, and, and our economy has changed. It has changed changed so much over the last 10, 11 years totally. that I think that um, sort of going back to something you said earlier, it's, you know, for most people, it's just a matter of time before <laughs> they're either approached or they become a customer or they might even become a business builder totally. in a company in the network marketing industry or the multi-level marketing industry. And it's just yeah. about you know, staying open, like you said, and, and, um, and realizing that, you know, not everybody is going to go to the same company. There's room for all of them. Now I hear and- my daughter upstairs making noise. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, well, on that note, I will just say, you know, if you're like, if you decide network marketing is not for you as a business, you know, support your friends, support the people. If you find a company you love, you know, support, because every time you support someone who has a network marketing business, you're supporting our economy, first of all, and you're also supporting a small business owner. And I think mm-hmm. that that's just like, we like to shop local. Um, you can shop local by, you know, buying uh, skincare or oils or nutrition or, you know, whatever that is, um, mm-hmm. shirts or, you know, I mean, now there's something, literally there's something for everybody. Um, so, so do that. You know, if you, if you are like, hey, I really need new toothpaste or I need new this or I need new shampoo, like, you know, think about who do I know who might sell that? Um, that's right. That's great. You know, try it out. It can't. And chances you. are the person who. Try it. Yeah, exactly. And the chances are the person who is representing those items is doing so for a good reason. Exactly. You know, exactly. they're you know they're they are trying to support their family, or they're trying to make a difference, or they're you know um, they're coming from a good place, exactly. and uh, and that's really what. Um, you know, this, this video series is about is introducing that idea to people that these are good people who are out to do good things. And I so appreciate you taking the time to be part of this. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure hearing more about your story. And, um, and uh, I'm so grateful that, uh, you know, again, in full disclosure that I get to work with you. Me too, man. It's, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just mine here. So. Well, no, thank you so much. And I'll let you get back to parenting and building your business. Awesome. Thanks, David. Thank Bye. you, Jen.